What happened was there were already incursions of fire ants in Brisbane and they wondered whether we'd be able to train a dog to find fire ants and it had never been done as far as we could establish anywhere in the world. And the big thing was there's over a hundred different species of ants in Greater Brisbane area. So not only did we have to get a dog to find ants, we had to be able to teach that dog to discriminate against all other ants and only find the fire ants. The first thing that we had to do was decide which type of uh, methodology we would use, whether we would use food, which some training programs use for sniffer dogs, or play-driven dogs. To have them be motivated by play, I feel, is a much better way, and that's the, the strongest way to get really nice working dogs that overcome all of the things that we need them to overcome in an environment. They love the game, and, and it's just, they get to play all day long. What we did was we imprinted the dog by taking the pheromones from the ants and giving those to the dog to be able to sniff and then making the play happen at that time. They basically think, when I find this odour, I find my toy and I get to play with my handler. Once the dogs actually accept that, we call it olfactory imprinting, they've actually got the scent in their head, they don't need to be presented scent. They know what it is that they're looking for. As soon as we had that done, we then did it, what we call a transition to take them from the um, lab produced odours to the same odours that wild colonies would produce. And that takes a little bit of tweaking to get done. So then we have to get them out to all different colonies so that they start hitting that wider picture of fire ant and all of the other environmental factors that come into that wide picture. And then testing them in the field and giving the opportunity to get around where there were ants and they could um, prove that they could find ants. I think these dogs are by far one of the most effective tools that we've currently got to date operationally. The land that they cover and the ability that they have to be able to detect, whether it be six ants here or a colony of ants over here with thousands in it, the dogs don't discriminate. And for us, that's extremely important because we want to make sure that we've got an area clear and make sure that it's fire ant free. With the environmental areas that these dogs can work in, whether it be longer grass, whether it be in someone's backyard, or broad scale acreage around cattle and livestock and everything else, the dogs work extremely well. They cover their areas quite rapidly and they have the ability to detect odour from anywhere from 10 to 30 metres out. Before I started actually working with the dogs, I was going out with the handlers and watching them work. And it wasn't until I actually went out in the field and didn't have any idea that we were going to find ants and then going through and actually watching the dog I was handling go ahead and indicate on a fire ant nest that I would not normally ever see because it was underground. It's a pretty good feeling and it sort of lets you sit back and realise how amazing the dogs actually are to be able to pick up a nest in an area that's five hectares. It was a uh, pretty big thrill for me. Because they're detecting stuff that visually you can't see. So that's what makes them a benefit. All year round operational surveillance tool that is giving us almost 100% confidence that when they clear an area, it is in fact clear.